live. Good morning, YouTube. <clears throat> For those of you that are watching this as a rerun or a replay on the tube, you can skip forward about 10 minutes. Mm. Now, there's some good well water right there, folks. When my nieces uh, came up from Vegas, took showers, they were uh, uh, pleasantly surprised. They didn't really know what was going on because they don't understand what soft water versus hard water is. And uh, we have exceptionally soft water. It's all filtered through coal veins up here. And uh, let me tell you this right now. You don't need much shampoo. <laughs> Waylon Turnus, good morning, my friend. How did everything go with Justin and the whole get-together the other night? Hope everything went well. You guys got to stop doing that on, like, spur of the moment. Here's two days' notice. Oh, and by the way, we're going in the middle of the week. Come on now. Granted, I can probably get away in the middle of the week. I can better than anything else, but... There you go. Poor all you guys that graduated way back when. I, see, if you don't show up to these uh, class reunions, I don't have to admit that I graduated that long time ago. It's only been like 10 years for me. There you go. Oh, we got to call John Arman. I better yeah. see if I can remember his number. That's a Brian and Sherry thing. <laughs> well, she is a Volk, so what do you do? <clears throat> Better get this ready, too. I'm way behind this morning. Hi, you've reached John Arman with Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV. I'm not wow. in right now. So leave your name and number. Come on, John. I don't know about that. There we go. Well, how long do you wait before you call somebody back again? Hmm? Oh. Only one fire last night. I was across the river, but uh, good thank goodness that uh, there was... A shot of rain that came up behind it and uh, put her out. So that was good. Let's try it again. Should we try it again? I think so. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Oh, not too bad. A little tired. Had camp all week for three days, so it uh, kind of wore me out. How did it go? Good. A little good. Good. Just hot. Yeah, I got to move some cows today, and I'm... So there's benefits and not benefits of doing this every Saturday morning. And the downfall is I have to wait until I'm done at eight o'clock my time to uh, go move these cows. So to get help, I had to get them lined up by nine and it's going to be pretty darn warm by that time. So yeah, so what do you do? It heats up pretty fast now, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it's supposed to be like 103 over here today, you know, but it's a dry heat. So that's fine. <laughs> it's 103. No doubt. It's going to be dry. Good grief. It's crazy. Uh, what the hell is my doing? Here? There it is. Daily forecast. Oh, I take it back. Good morning, uh, Karen over at KOLY. Good to have you this morning. It's only going to be 96 today. So there you go. 96. All right. Uh, it's nothing. Cooling cool, cool off. Nothing. <clears throat> well, being live on YouTube at this moment, is there any words of advice that you can give people that are looking at uh, possibly uh, popping the question to somebody 
and making it a, you know, like a special moment in the hunting industry, how would you do it? How, how would I do what? How would you propose to somebody if you were both in the hunting industry? Propose to somebody? Yeah. Hmm. How would you do that? <laughs> this is like promposal and things like that. You got to come up with something wild. Huh? Well, they, you know, everybody's doing these uh, gender reveals. Yeah. And I'm yeah, waiting, yeah. you know. So, I mean, you go on Amazon and you can buy the pink or the blue. I'm wondering when they're going to start taking that away from people and saying, oh, you can't put colors with genders anymore. Uh, and like I tell you, you can think you can, they can't take anything away from it if you, if you don't let them. Just because people say things doesn't <laughs> mean you got to quit doing it. Uh, I hear that. You should have seen so that. I, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. No, you go ahead. I'll cut you off. So I was going to say, I, I can't think of anything anyway. I'm old fashioned. I'd take my wife out to, Maybe in the, I don't know, if you're hunting out in the antelope line when it's 100 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> you know, or maybe she will say no. Well, if she says no in the hunting blind, it might be an awkward rest of the hunt, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Better than her saying no in front of a uh, thousand people, though, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Big Daddy Dave Williams is going on pier this morning. Good morning. Good morning. I just see you post something. I've seen something. Yeah. I found a uh, something on social media last night. A quote that says, "You either quit or you keep going. Either way, both are going to hurt." <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Forest Service put uh, a burn ban finally on all uh, public property, Forest Service property. Just making a fool out of yourself. <clears throat> Oh, oh, yeah, it's it's something. The county's already put it on, so it doesn't matter what they do, but no open campfires. Shocker, right? Yeah, and people still will. Yep, no driving on two-track trails. you got to walk in finally, which I think if you're going to be out here hunting anyway, that's how it should be. That I agree. That's just me. Going to have Benny Paulson on my Country Fresh podcast next month to talk about the band and the new album. Going to be fun. Yeah. So this is uh, one of the DJs down at Pier. He's uh, going to have Benny Paulson on down on one of his uh, podcasts. I tell you what, Big Daddy Dave, he is, uh, if you can do it in person, it'd be even better. He's just a great guy to meet. Just a good guy all around. <clears throat> and then you can have John Armin on your podcast next because he me, plays a mean fiddle. Uh, I play one of those, what do you call those things, those twangers? You put in your mouth, mouth harp? And, they call yeah, it a Jew's go. harp or whatever, yeah. I actually have one of those. I uh, got into that uh, years ago. I was playing the Jew's harp, and then uh, I forgot how to do it now. <laughs> I don't even know where that thing is. All right. Well, so do you want to just uh, be nice and politically correct, or do you want to uh, stir the pot this morning? Well, you know me. I have no problem stirring the pot. Okay. Ooh, easy. Neither does your horse. Yeah, no, he's like. Just had I had the county come out and spray for some spurs, and so I got them locked in. And yeah. I got spur, spurs coming up on. I mean, down at the ranch is just a given. Here, it started getting in the pasture, and I've sprayed it a couple times, and I cannot knock it back. <laughs> Yeah, all kinds of weeds are popping up this year. Oh, my gosh. If someone would come up, I can't believe when these guys can't come up with a food plot that will grow like a freaking weed with no rain. Well, that's what I've been telling people for a long time is we need to have like an alfalfa kosher weed cross, like a hybrid, because kosher grows at any temperatures. It doesn't matter, especially in a drought. Yeah. You can get that Isn't to grow that all over the place. Yeah. Well, and at least I got to say one thing is the kosher weed, even in my food plots and stuff, the deer eat it. You know, the cows eat it, the horses eat it. Really? But, yeah. yeah I, I see them nipping off the tops of it and stuff. And isn't kosher good for like, you can, isn't it not bad if you hay it? You know what we used to do when I was a kid uh, growing up, we had, you know, this is before no-till farming, of course. 
We had it right. so bad in uh, uh, oh, in our oats crop or our corn rows or what have you. And we used to chop it. We used to cut it down and chop it, make silage out of it, and put it in our silage pile. And it was really, really good feed. Yeah. Uh, Wayne Muth says, good morning, gentlemen. Yeah, Wayne was one of the instructors at camp, and he did an awesome job. Good. Him and, him and I were the old guys there. The rest of them were a bunch of young punks that helped us. You know what they say, you don't get smart without being having a little age on you. So, All right, <laughs> stand by, John, here. It's stations, stations, 30-second check here, 30 seconds at mark, 30 seconds. <clears throat> According to my clock. Fifteen seconds. Five. Well, good morning, friends and neighbors, and welcome to the Saturday edition of Dakota Prairie Outdoors. I'm Scott Bachmeyer, and it's time to We Can Talk Outdoors across six states and a couple of those Canadian provinces up there, courtesy of great radio stations all across the Dakota Territory, like KCJB in Minot, KOLY in Mobridge, KLTC in Dickinson, KGFX in Pier, and the voice of the Northern Plains, KFIRE 550 in Bismarck. Also, big thanks for those of you who have subscribed to my YouTube channel, Dakota Prairie Outdoors Radio. Now, uh, stations, just a heads up for the uh, not only stations, the listeners, too, uh, because uh, I will be doing my show next week. And I'm going to say somewhat pre-recording. I'm going to be doing it uh, and posting it on the YouTube channel because I'm entered into the Dakota Walleye Classic Fishing Tournament next uh, Friday and Saturday up on Lake Sakakawea. So uh, while I wanted to do my show live from the water and from the boat fishing, uh, after testing the hotspots and the uh, cell phone service out on the big lake for my phone and broadband, didn't quite have enough service to be comfortable and reliable enough internet to be able to broadcast. So I will be uh, doing it on the uh, my YouTube channel the night before, and it'll, of course, be posted up there for you guys to play it on Saturday while I'm trying uh, my very first fishing tournament. So uh, just kind of a heads up for next Saturday and listeners, the same thing. Uh, you won't be able to call in next Saturday, but you can today, 888-932-5682. That's 888-932-5682. It is toll free, and uh, feel free to do that. If you want to text me questions, you can do that at 701-425-6651. I'm also live right now in my YouTube channel. You can chat me with me that way. You can find me on Messenger, TikTok, all those social media formats. My guest today is one of the hosts of Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV. It's the man, the myth and the legend, Mr. John Arman. How are you this morning? I'm doing great, buddy. How are you? You know, it's a great day to be alive, man. I'm on the right side of the dirt. I hear you, and I'm sitting outside, and it actually feels like it's not going to be hot today, but I know that's a lie. It is a lie. It's so going to be hot it's today. A beautiful, yeah, it's a beautiful morning. It's kind of cool. I wish it would stay like this. Yeah. So last night, it, well, this weekend is the start of the Bowman County Fair, and last night I was uh, asked to announce the Ranch Rodeo. Now, these ranch rodeos, John, are becoming more and more popular as, a, you know, kind of a county fair type of thing. And if you go down to the southern states like Texas and Oklahoma, it's huge. That's big money down there. I mean, that's what they there's a whole ranch rodeo circuit that they follow. And uh, last night, it's kind of cool because our local Bowman County Extension agent, Max Robinson, who spent all week preparing for this, probably months preparing for the county fair, for the 4-H projects, for the kids, and the uh, open show there was last night. Uh, today is the uh, fair sale, the 4-H sale, and I'm one of the auctioneers selling the animals, so that'll be fun. But uh, so uh, not only doing all that, last night his team won the ranch rodeo too. So everybody was just cheering the heck out of their local county extension agent who not only helps put on most everything for the fair, uh, but uh, ended up uh, winning the ranch rodeo last night. So there you go. Pretty good stuff. That's, that's awesome. Congratulations to those yeah. guys. Yeah. And then the rest of the night we were on fire watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no kidding. And a little bit of lightning I mean, yeah. across the river that started a fire, but it got put out right away. So, Yeah, last, um, I was, when was it? I got a call the other day from one of my neighbors and said there was a fire like close. And it was a lightning strike. It was when we had that lightning come through the other 
the other morning and there was one just up river not probably about a mile and a half so it but they got it out right away so thank you to the rural fire department yeah well i said that last night too uh i said you know we were waiting where the guy bringing the steers in last night was kind of behind a little bit so we i had to fill in some time and same thing i said uh you know how about a round of applause for the rural fire departments because man they if any year has been a, a, a challenge year an expensive year um this is the one man and these local fire departments especially on the volunteer side not always working with the most uh new up-to-date equipment but they're always out there helping so uh, if you're on any of the rural fire departments, thank you so much. So any fishing tips that you can give me for next weekend's fishing tournament that I'm going to be entering? Since I'm going against like people that are professionals like Jason Wright and Kurt Toronto and Justin Thiel you know, would, and uh, yeah, all these professionals. I would invest in a pair of Minnesota. Um, they got some, it's like a Minnesota fish finder. They're called binoculars. And you just use them and you find the guys <laughs> that are really good fishermen and you find them on the water and then you go fish next to them. And aggravate them. <laughs> Here's the problem with this, John. Okay, are you ready for this? Our fishing boat is not even comparable to those guys'. Okay, but what do you mean I, you don't you, you, I, don't, you I, don't have like a 21 foot ranger? Or no, cheater? <laughs> no. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> I I need the binoculars to see how fast they're pulling away from me. Is what it would end up being. Okay, I, I'm thinking about bringing my 17 HMR with and seeing if there's any prairie dog towns at the same time along the banks or something like that, but. I did find out I can fish for prairie dogs legally too. So that that's good. Well, that's good. Yeah. That's so no good. tips at all. Huh? Just go out and have fun or what? Oh uh, man, you're, you're talking to the wrong guy. I haven't fished. <laughs> I think I've fished the, the lake once in the last 10 years. And that was because I was filming those guys. So I would, like I said, talk to JW. Maybe you can get him into giving you like his number 20th spot or yeah, something like yeah. that. To fish. Well, I had him on a few weeks ago and he, he, we were discussing this. I don't know if it was uh, live or if it was uh, when we were before we got on air. But uh, I got to tell you this. Some people are okay giving you some tips and, and techniques on fishing. But one thing that anglers, I got to make sure I don't say fishermen because I got chewed out being not politically correct. One thing that anglers uh, are probably the worst at is giving any new person advice on where to go. No, it's, you know, I was talking to, yeah, I was talking to a young man about that the other day. It's, you know, and I don't know if it's just because of the the amount of pressure and things like that. It is such a secretive thing. And, and I got to say one thing about Jason, Wright is that he will tell you. He will tell you where to go find fish. He may not give you his spot on the spot, right? but he will tell you exactly what he was using, exactly um, what presentation, how fast, all that stuff. And there's some guys that won't even, that they won't even no, tell won't you, you that. Yeah. Any, anything. And again, you know, it's, you're trying to get people, you know, interested and help them. And, and Jason loves doing that. So I, I give him a, a high five yeah. because he's not afraid to to give out some of his information. He'll just outwork people. Even if they're in the same spot, he'll just work harder. Yeah. And that's fine. You know, and it, we don't have a fast, but we're not, you know, this is our first tournament. So it's, you know, it's like, it's like going to a coyote tournament is how I compared it to. I talked to Jesse last night. I said, make sure the boat's ready. I said, it's like going to a coyote tournament and you're in there for the pre-registration and you're talking to these guys and everything's going good. You're discussing things and like, so where are you going to go hunting tomorrow? And they just lock up and they turn and walk away. <laughs> it's like, no, yeah. we're not going to give that information out at all. And it's like, I understand it's a tournament and everything, but uh, what surprises me, you know, fishing tournaments are all about, you know, there's big money prizes. I think first place is like 15 grand here for this uh, tournament. So, I mean, it's nothing to sneeze at, right? Uh, right. But could you imagine if you and I were to host a, uh, a uh, white tail doe, tournament for money how uh <laughs> could you imagine we'd be uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'd be that, 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 that's a pretty good idea <laughs> for, for the for the, the dome, heaviest deer doe management you know? yeah well we my father-in-law does it here it's the longest mule deer doe ear contest it's five bucks to enter and whoever wins the longest ear they take the pot so yeah, yeah. 
it's a good way to manage that stuff. Anyway, well, coming up uh, in the second part of our show here, the next one, as we're coming up against our break, we're going to talk about the archery camp that you just uh, completed. And uh, if anybody has questions or comments for John and anything, even how to propose to somebody in the hunting blind, you can do that. 888-932-5682. That's 888-932-5682. Today's show brought to you by many great sponsors like Action Motorsports here. Britt's with it. You know, he's probably not open right now, but he's ready to. And if you just go knock on the door, he'll probably make breakfast for you. Uh, any kind of ATV side by sides, and uh, he'll help you out with all the accessories and everything. It will get you set up. Action Motorsports on the strip in Mandan, also Ponderosa Screen Printing in Rapid City, South Dakota. And uh, they will print anything, no matter what it says. We'll be back after these messages. Dakota Prairie Outdoors. For over 80 years, Dakota Community Bank and Trust has been your locally owned hometown bank, an honor we take great pride in. And our customer satisfaction has always been our most important goal. We've gone along with the communities we serve and will continue to do so with our pledge of modern banking convenience with old-fashioned hometown service. From remote deposit options to online mortgage applications, we are happy to serve you wherever you are. Learn more at dakotacommunitybank.com. That's dakotacommunitybank.com. MoPro Guide Service, the best on Lake Oahe. Brent and his staff will give you the most enjoyable fishing experience, always having the latest in electronics, gear, and the most comfortable Lund boat on the water. Fish with somebody who lives in Mobridge, South Dakota, the heart of Lake Oahe. If you need a place to stay, the Rest Motel has newly updated rooms with free internet, a family-owned and operated business. Go to oahewalleyes.com. That's O-A-H-E, walleyes.com, for the best fishing experience Lake Oahe has to offer. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Our outdoor heritage is important to North Dakotans, and the state's oil and natural gas industry is advancing the possibilities for conservation. The North Dakota Outdoor Heritage Fund receives up to $40 million per biennium from oil and natural gas taxes. The industry is reclaiming land for future generations, and it's developing our state's natural resources in harmony with our great outdoors and wildlife. North Dakota Oil and Natural Gas, advancing the possibilities. Brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Foundation. Pfeiffer's Western team of Andy Murdoch and Jim Savvy would like to invite you to sit down and talk about the future of land planning. Whether you're looking at selling, buying, or options to hand it down to the next generation, Andy and Jim will lay out all of the options for you. It's a great time to buy or sell and with interest rates to make it profitable. Pfeiffer's Western team, Andy Murnock and Jim Savvy. For more information or land updates, go to Pfeiffer's.com. Rockin' 7W has all the panels you need. Freestanding panels, windbreak panels, feeder panels, and the original protester panel. If you don't know what that is, it's a sort panel that makes sorting calves from a cow a breeze. You can do it in a fraction of time with just one person on foot or horseback. You can custom order sizes to fit your current operation, or you can start from scratch. Rockin' 7 7W also does trailer repair on any size trailers, mobile welding, and custom cattle hauling. Call Justin at Rockin' 7W at 701-206-1030. That's 701-206-1030. Rockin' 7W, the farmer and rancher's go-to guy. As an independent insurance agency, Dakota Community Insurance partners with leading insurance companies to offer products that are designed around you and your farm insurance needs. As a leader in farm and ranch insurance, we can help you to minimize the risk to you and your operations operation, including farm equipment, livestock, farm buildings, and crops. Stop into your local branch to visit with our insurance agent or visit dakotacommunitybank.com. You can rely on us when nature strikes. Dakota Community Insurance. At Dakota Community Bank and Trust, that's what we do. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. 
Our outdoor heritage is important to North Dakotans, and the state's oil and natural gas industry is advancing the possibilities for conservation. The North Dakota Outdoor Heritage Fund receives up to $40 million per biennium from oil and natural gas taxes. The industry is reclaiming land for future generations, and it's developing our state's natural resources in harmony with our great outdoors and wildlife. North Dakota Oil and Natural Gas, advancing the possibilities. Brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Foundation. Benny Paulson, right here, Dakota Prairie Outdoors, Saturday edition, music from Benny Paulson right there, if you want to catch more of him, uh, Big Daddy Dave down at KGFX and Pierre, one of our affiliates playing the show right now, uh, check out the Country Fresh podcast next month, and he'll be talking with Benny Paulson right there about his latest album and music and all that good stuff, and uh, just an all-around good guy, I think even Wayne Moose got to meet him here at the uh, was it Country Fest in New Salem, I believe, so thanks Benny. Not only being a good person, but thank you for allowing me to use your music on my radio program. John Arman is my guest from Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV. And, well, John, uh, your archery camp for the kids here. You just had it this week. Let's talk. How did it go through? It went It went awesome. It's good. called Raised it full, full Draw. And this is our second year we've done it in uh, North Dakota or in Bismarck. Yeah. Last year, of course, because of the pandemic, nothing happened. But we had um, friends from... Uh, Minnesota, Wayne Moose here from Mandan, uh, a couple other gentlemen, Damian, Levi, um, instructors did an awesome job this year. Shields donated a couple guys for setting up the bow, Zach Cameron, Jonathan Dahlbeck. Big thanks to those guys. So had kids from rugby, from Medina, um, Wilton just across the state and the kids had a blast. I mean, I, I got to tell people it, it's one of those things that when I started, I get frustrated and wonder why I'm doing this. Cause it's a lot of work. And then when you have kids come up to you um, and start talking about how excited they are about hunting and about shooting their bow and the smiles you see at camp, it's all worth it. You know, we know Wayne's listening. He's one of your instructors here. And you said you guys were the old guys at the, so uh, what's wrong with being the old guys at the camp? What's wrong? Well, not, I mean, you're uh, still doing it. You're still out hiking and, and hunting. I mean, a lot of people, uh, you, they can't say that all the time. No, but we're just a little slower than the rest of them, but we still had a good time. And we still, <laughs> we showed them how to do it. Slow is good at hunting sometimes, I think. That's what you want to and, do. Uh, <clears throat> yep, and that's what we told them. We, we told them when you're spotting and spooking, if you're going <laughs> slow, then go 10 times slower because you're really not going slow. Yeah. 888-932-5682 if you want to call in. Also, text message at 701-425-6651. And a text message comes in and says, uh, when are you going to have one of these uh, youth archery camps in South Dakota? Well, <clears throat> excuse me. They just got it. We just got it. Someone's got to get get it set up. They need to help me because what we try to do is we've been doing these across <laughs> the country, and we just need an organization or somebody that kind of takes the bull by the horns gives us a call and then we plan and try to, you know, try to set something up. So it's, it's something that can happen. We just need a, a facility or a place to do it. Um, someone's land, you know, something like that, but it does take, it takes a lot more work than most people think. We just need some volunteers and, and someone to kind of uh, run that down there. And then I would come down and, and train and, and work with them and, and set it up down there and even do it with them. Yeah. Well, I'll uh, tell you what, not only that, if you have uh, questions or comments, you can get a hold of John. I mean, there's one thing, uh, we don't really shy away from giving our cell phone numbers out, John, do we? I mean, if people like us no. or hate us, we uh, will gladly take your calls and talk with you and have a conversation, too. I mean, that's just absolutely. Spot, they know? can, yeah, they can reach me at, you know, at 701 391 2438, and you can go to Raised at Full Draw or go to, you know, our website at team UOA and, and find my email information. And if they're really interested in getting something going like that, you know, just give us a holler because we've got camps and I think right now we have Montana, Iowa, uh, Wisconsin. I think we have one this year in Michigan 
and here in North Dakota. So we're, we're kind of spreading our wings and, and looking for other places too and other people to help out. So what kind of, you said you need like somebody to spearhead it. Are you talking like a, a mule deer foundation type of uh, organization or are we just talking anything? Could it be a local Elks club? Could it be a, uh, just a, a private person that has, uh, you know, some land out there in the middle of, a, you know, Perkins County for crying. I don't know. I mean, what do you really need out that way? Well, <clears throat> what we need is we, we really just need someone, you know, like myself or like you, that's like passionate about the outdoors and they want to get this set up because you, you know, you fundraise yourself. You know, I, I yeah. get out there and I hustle to get the money for the North Dakota camp. And then I get the volunteers here that come in and help set up camp. And then and the instructors that will be trained in, in what we're doing. So it just kind of takes a group of people. But, you know, if you have one person that's got the ambition, you know, to get it rolling and that they kind of end up being like the what we call camp hosts, where they, you know, kind of get things lined up in their area and, and help things get rolling. And that's what we need. Yeah. Well, you know, we're reaching around. We got uh, somebody listening from Deerwood, Minnesota listening. It's uh, our friend Jamie, but he's out there on a lake right now. Can you believe that? <laughs> you know, the guy never stays home. He's always vacationing somewhere. But he never comes this yeah. way, I tell you what. Hey, John, besides yes, the sir. camp, let's talk South Dakota a little bit. So uh, I, spend a, I spend a good amount of my time down in uh, the Black Hills. Yeah. And the, the trip from uh, the border, I'd say, I'm going to say from Bowman, North Dakota to, to uh, Belfouche, South Dakota, I've seen uh, just a, a very good influx of uh, pronghorn antelope. And uh, nice. it's it's fun. And I know a lot of people on that corridor, you know, which is good. I mean, I mean the Harding County area has always been really good to me. Folks are, have been just uh, awesome down that way. So, uh, But you're headed that way to do some uh, pronghorn hunting this year. So let's talk about this South Dakota <clears throat> pronghorn. Well, you know, it's one of those deals I was telling you, Scott, you know, for the last 15 years, we've been hunting antelope or more in Montana and Wyoming. And occasionally, you know, a scratch off one in South Dakota, depending on where we hunt. Right. This, this year, and I don't know if it's because of the pandemic or whatever, but there's been just a huge influx of people applying for uh, non-resident tags around the country. And in Wyoming, we hunt a unit that has usually about a thousand tags left over and they change the tags from just one tag to an A and B tag. One is A is for private land, B is for public. And then the reason they did that is because 95% of that county is private and it was really tough to hunt. And so people would come in and buy these tags and have no place to hunt. Okay. And you know, so we ha had places, we built relationships with ranchers and we would buy our tags when we would go down there or buy them after the draw walk. And there were 627 tags left. And when I, the day that it opened up, a friend called me and said they were all sold out, which has never mm -hmm. happened in the, yeah. So I messed up. We should have put in. So now we're looking at South Dakota. So we've got, I've been putting in calls to everybody I know down in South Dakota and trying to find a place that we can um, antelope hunt down there. So, you know, there's, there's public land down there we can hunt. I'm just a little bit nervous about that because again, of the influx of people that didn't get drawn um, from Montana and Wyoming. And I think South Dakota is going to get, you know, hit pretty hard. Yeah. So, so we're, we're searching and we're looking and I've got some calls out there, but I, I'm not going to give up because animal hunting is one of my favorite things to do and my favorite critter, critter to eat, mm -hmm. you know? So, and plus that's kind of my hunt with my daughter and I get, I mean, this year would be a year I'd get to hunt with her. So I'm, I'm going to work hard at trying to find a place down there and probably going to head down there in the next, I would say in about a week or two, usually around that first of August and start scouting and looking and, you know, go, you know, not hopefully by that time I've knocking doors yeah, exactly yeah you know and if i gotta sit on someone's baler if there's any hay to be made <laughs> <laughs> or whatever i can do to help them out i would do i would do to help them because i know it's been not been an easy year down there and again i think ranchers and, and the farmers appreciate any help they can get as long as it's good help john now yes <laughs> nope and trust me I'm a, I'm, I'm a i'm a jack of all trades and a master of none but i've done about everything there is on the ranch and farming end of it and I'm a, I'm a quick learner too. You may have to teach me how to run your, 
your your combine or whatever just for a brief a brief rundown and then i should be good to go so people have uh, if they want to host you and say you know what i wouldn't mind having john and his daughter come down here and hunt on my property and uh, help me out with a few chores how do they get in touch with you again well, they can reach us at 701-391-2438 or email me. And, and again, it's funny how people, I'm sure some people will, will uh, hear this and say, yeah, that's how they get to hunt because they're on TV. No, nope. I'm just using a friend of mine that's got a radio show to reach out <laughs> to a few more people that if there's anybody that's got some property that they wouldn't mind. I'm like I said, I'm, and I'm not, I'm not afraid to pay a trespass fee, not afraid to work, not afraid to do anything. I will come down and introduce ourselves and and do whatever so that's how i and and again that's how i do it scott it's not we're kind of just joking around here on the radio doing this we'll we'll continue here we're up against the break here john stone sorry to cut you off here but we'll talk more on the uh, second side of the break after this on dakota prairie outdoors For over 80 years, Dakota Community Bank and Trust has been your locally owned hometown bank, an honor we take great pride in, and our customer satisfaction has always been our most important goal. We've gone along with the communities we serve and will continue to do so with our pledge of modern banking convenience with old-fashioned hometown service. From remote deposit options to online mortgage applications, we are happy to serve you wherever you are. Learn more at dakotacommunitybank.com. That's dakotacommunitybank.com. MoPro Guide Service, the best on Lake Oahe. Brent and his staff will give you the most enjoyable fishing experience, always having the latest in electronics, gear, and the most comfortable Lund boat on the water. Fish with somebody who lives in Mobridge, South Dakota, the heart of Lake Oahe. If you need a place to stay, the Rest Motel has newly updated rooms with free internet, a family-owned and operated business. Go to oahewalleyes.com. That's O-A-H-E, walleyes.com, for the best fishing experience Lake Oahe has to offer. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Our outdoor heritage is important to North Dakotans, and the state's oil and natural gas industry is advancing the possibilities for conservation. The North Dakota Outdoor Heritage Fund receives up to $40 million per biennium from oil and natural gas taxes. The industry is reclaiming land for future generations, and it's developing our state's natural resources in harmony with our great outdoors and wildlife. North Dakota Oil and Natural Gas, advancing the possibilities. Brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Foundation. Pfeiffer's Western team of Andy Murdoch and Jim Savvy would like to invite you to sit down and talk about the future of land planning. Whether you're looking at selling, buying, or options to hand it down to the next generation, Andy and Jim will lay out all of the options for you. It's a great time to buy or sell and with interest rates to make it profitable. Pfeiffer's Western team, Andy Murnock and Jim Savvy. For more information or land updates, go to Pfeiffer's.com. Rockin' 7W has all the panels you need. Freestanding panels, windbreak panels, feeder panels, and the original protester panel. If you don't know what that is, it's a sort panel that makes sorting calves from a cow a breeze. You can do it in a fraction of time with just one person on foot or horseback. You can custom order sizes to fit your current operation, or you can start from scratch. Rockin' 7 7W also does trailer repair on any size trailers, mobile welding, and custom cattle hauling. Call Justin at Rockin' 7W at 701-206-1030. That's 701-206-1030. Rockin' 7W, the farmer and rancher's go-to guy. As an independent insurance agency, Dakota Community Insurance partners with leading insurance companies to offer products that are designed around you and your farm insurance needs. As a leader in farm and ranch insurance, we can help you to minimize the risk to you and your operations including farm equipment, livestock, farm buildings, and crops. Stop into your local branch to visit with our insurance agent or visit dakotacommunitybank.com. You can rely on us when nature strikes. Dakota Community Insurance. At Dakota Community Bank and Trust, that's what we do. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. 
We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Our outdoor heritage is important to North Dakotans, and the state's oil and natural gas industry is advancing the possibilities for conservation. The North Dakota Outdoor Heritage Fund receives up to $40 million per biennium from oil and natural gas taxes. The industry is reclaiming land for future generations, and it's developing our state's natural resources in harmony with our great outdoors and wildlife. North Dakota Oil and Natural Gas, advancing the possibilities. Brought to you by the North Dakota Petroleum Foundation. Welcome back, everybody. It is Dakota Prairie Outdoors Saturday edition. Good morning. I'm Scott Bachmeyer. My uh, guest is Mr. John Armand from Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV. And I, I had to cut him off uh, in the first half hour. He's saying, you know, it's just regular people just trying to find places to go hunt. And it's not like uh, we're trying to abuse it or, or uh, just put it on TV and try to be famous. We're just regular folks out doing this, John. Yeah. And then, and like I said, I, you know, when I talked to you on the break, it's like, it's, we're just goofing around a little bit, but I tell you, I hustle hard. Yeah. I mean, I always do, no matter if it's for sponsorships or whatever, I'm not afraid to talk to people. Um, worst case scenario, no one will answer and no one will say it, but we may get somebody that says, you know what? Yeah. I don't have anybody hunting down here. And if you want to come down and take a look at it. And again, I appreciate that. Uh, so I think in today's world, people are afraid to ask and I'm not, I never have. And I know like Kurt and Jason, they have a lot of pride. They want to ask anybody where the fish are biting. I got no pride when it comes to that because I don't fish. And so I will. And, and I know guys get, I, I know guys get mad at it, but Hey, what I'm just wanting to look, you know, find a spot to take my daughter out to catch a fish or something like that. I'm not going to be fishing there every day. It'd be like maybe once or twice. So right. for me, you know, I don't mind asking. Well, and you have to be able to accept no for an answer and not get pissy about it. You know I mean? I've had a few people come into the yard and they're like, uh, you know, can we go up and can we just drive up there and go scout and go shed hunting? I'm like, no, well, you can't one, because there's a County burn ban that like, you, you can't travel on two track trails out here, which a lot of people have to check on that. All right. And you, you really have to, especially this year, every County has a, a few different restrictions. Burn ban doesn't necessarily mean you just can't not have a campfire. Uh, right. You know, our burn ban includes, uh, traveling restrictions are prohibited, uh, just a lot of things. So, I mean, please check that out before you come out here because, uh, I had a, I got chewed out the other day, John, holy cow, did I get chewed out when it was like a uh, hundred degrees there for like a week straight. Uh, yeah. Somebody came flying through a yard, private property, crossed our private property and, uh, jumped over on the trail and headed North to some federal land. And, uh, so I went up and I talked to him. I'm like, uh, I'm not sure if you know this. I said, but uh, our county has a burn ban, which means that you can't. And he jumped my, you know what? And I mean, chewed me out. I wanted to use this as a radio program for my daily show. I I didn't have enough beeps to cover every word that I was being called. So I called the county sheriff. I just called him up, the deputy sheriff. And I says, here you go. You talk to the county sheriff because he's the one that's going to probably come out here. And he, uh, he proceeded to leave at a, at a fast pace and still call me some names, but you got to check that stuff. And, and if you say no, it doesn't mean no forever. It just means not right now. And I don't know, evidently not enough of these hunters have been married long enough to know what no means. And you have to just get around <laughs> it and still keep going with the relationship. You know what I mean? Ah, that's funny. I was just thinking the same thing. I'm not afraid of no. I got told no a lot. I get the, all the time is what we do that for. Yeah. Uh, no, and, and and guys, guys like that are what bring a bad, and that's what people don't understand. We represent each other, whether you're a rancher and a landowner. So now, if Scott Bachmeyer would have drove out there, slammed on his brakes, come flying out of his truck and cussing at the guy, yep. and yelling and screaming at the guy, what does that do for the rancher's image? Doesn't do any good. No. And so the same thing goes, you know, because people will say that it, this is a guy could have said you know what i'm sorry thank you um is there a way that i can get back here or whatever just have a play conversation but instead by screaming and hollering at you 
you're going to go talk to your neighbors and you're going to talk to the people at the cafe and they'll be like, Hey Scott, what happened today? I just had some jack wagon come through my yard and was about ready to start a fire. And we started yelling and screaming at me, some guy that thinks he's a hunter. Well, pretty soon, you know, people get bad names. And again, there's, there's no reason. And I told my kids at camp out of all the times, all the trespassers I've caught in my place, I have not approached one of them angrily. I walk up to them or I drive up to them and say, excuse me, can I help you? Are you lost? And then I let them set the tone of how I will react after that. But I'm always polite right away because some people don't know. Some people, you know, may just, you know, yeah, so slip their mind. Exactly. You know? Exactly. We all make mistakes in life. You just got to own up to them once in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Rumor has it, John, CRP payments. Uh, I have a new sign up. I haven't seen a contract yet, but. Up to sixty plus dollars in some areas, over a hundred in some of the uh, higher producing areas. Uh, so the question I want to pose to the listening audience and yourself, and if people want to call in and say right, wrong, or indifferent, eight 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 nine three two five six eight two. That's eight 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 nine three two five six eight two. If you're taking CRP payments, should you have your land open to the public since you're taking government money for that? Your thoughts. Well, you know, we've talked about this in the past because in years past, years ago, we were in the CRP program and we did receive a payment and the land was not open, you know, for, for public hunting. <clears throat> I can, I can tell you this, that my father at the time, there'd be no way in double H E hockey sticks, LL, whatever, that he would have been in any program if he'd had to open up his land, just because the fact, not that he doesn't want to share. And it's the same way with me. It's not that I don't want to share, but it is my land and I want to control it. Right. And what people don't understand right now is that CRP was made for the farmer rancher. I understand that, but it helped the hunting industry, the hunters, the population, the wildlife a thousand times hold. And, and the surprising and, part about that, John is, when this CRP originally came out, it was to take highly erodible land out of production. Yes. It had nothing right. to do with hunting at all. It right. was just a right. happy benefit that happened with it. Right. And so from that, you know, when it first started, if, if anybody's been around and hunted long enough, they know that the days of CRP were the best hunting ever, whether it's duck hunting, um, deer hunting, or pheasant hunting across the Dakotas. It, it, was, it was an amazing thing to see. Granted, it started out as a farm program. So what I'm saying to people is that if you, if we want our, our hunting to get back to the way it was and to have the cover and things, there's some give and take in this. And as a landowner, I have public land that's within, you know, a quarter mile from us or whatever. And then maybe my neighbor allows people to hunt. If I have a piece of CRP that I put in and I'm getting paid for, I'm fencing it. I'm spraying it. I'm taking care of it because there's, when you are in a CRP program, it's not just plant it and let it go. It's work. And they come and check it um, and all kinds of things. And if it's not up to par, you don't get paid. But my land now is going to be better for wildlife. And that wildlife doesn't stay on my property. Right. It goes all over. So if people, you know, people are going to complain and say, well, you're getting paid for it. It's going to it need to be opened up. Well, then the rancher and the farmer are not going to do it. They're not going to give up their land. And, you know, we can, we can go on this payment thing because you get money from the government. Well, we all get money from the government. There's not a person out there that doesn't get taxes back or some kind of break or something like that. It's kind of like rep reciprocity. How far do you go back? How right. do you keep going? And again, I'm, I'm a landowner. I want CRP. It would be nice. We've never been able to get it. Um, but again, we put our land back in the CRP just so it helps the wildlife. And if you look out east, we don't have CRP anymore. Very, very little cover. It's farm from road to road. And I understand why they're doing it because they're trying to make a living. But it's also put, taking the pressure from east and bringing it out west mm -hmm. to you guys. And we need to get more uh, uh, habitat across the country. So this is a win-win for hunters, whether or not it's open to the public or not, it's going to make hunting better. And that's what they got to think of. Don't, don't be selfish, you know, on that part of it, because it, it, it could help us quite a bit. Text message. We're going to, we're going to go and cover all the questions coming in. Okay. 
is uh, you and I are not scared to talk about things, and this is what people are watching for, and that's what they listen for. It says, as a landowner who loves to hunt, and 99% of his hunting is done on their own land, what's your guys' opinion on the new hunting posting laws using electronic apps? The burden is still on the landowner's shoulder. Let's talk about that, because I had a spirited conversation last night about this as well. So in the North Dakota board, just so our South Dakota listeners understand, um. I wish we could be like South Dakota. Everything's assumed posted. You got to go ask permission. That would be nice. Uh, we we have tried that on the uh, North Dakota side, and it has failed uh, a few different times trying to get it passed through the legislature. So what they did was they said, well, uh, we'll try this electronic app where you can go. A landowner can go on. You can enter your either your tax code or your whatever land descriptions, and you can go and electronically post it. And uh, then if somebody is on uh, the app, you know, on the Game and Fish app or however it's posted, they can look at it and say, oh, okay, well, this is uh, close to hunting. We have to ask, but this isn't, so we're going to, we, we can walk in here. That's in lieu of putting up posted signs or no trespassing signs. So the, uh, it sounds like a good idea, and I was going to post all my stuff on there, but then I realized, guess what, John? You got to do this every year, okay? And so... Uh, I'm just keeping my posted signs up and doing it old school. Well, and again, I was talking because I wasn't sure, you know, I've, I know that we were kind of pushing this way, but I didn't know. So if you, if I would go and electronically post my land right now, I don't have to physically post it or do you still have Correct. to physically post it? As far as I know, you don't physically have to post it if it's on the electronic side. Okay. Yeah. And again, no, I, here's my I double check that, yeah. but that's what I was on the understanding. Right. And I think that's the way it was. They were trying to go here. My, my deal on this is, and this is again, my own personal opinion. I think this is a way to try to appease um, a certain amount of people uh, because there was such pushback on this. My, my, my feeling on this. Who are they appeasing, as, John? Well, again, they're appeasing the the hunter that's complaining that they're going to lose their rights. I'm not saying I so. See. To I me, see. it to me, it's too muddy. It it's cut and dried. Either either do it, it's a no trespass law, or don't do it. Yeah. Either way, to me, this way is too complicated. Um, the old time ranchers and farmers aren't going to do it. Um, that that kind of thing. Um, and I know the sportsmen, and and I've said this many times and I've gotten chewed out for it and guys, I, I see both sides of it, but I don't have a problem. I hunt every state I hunt has a no trespass law and I don't have problem finding places to hunt because I do a little work. <laughs> and I do understand that it is, it is going to, you know, shut you down. If you're driving down the road and you see a field of geese, you know, and it's not posted, you know, in the past you were able just to, to go sit on it and hunt it. Now it takes a little bit of effort, but just think about this. It takes a little bit of effort. You find out the landowner and you're done. You got that field for the rest of your life as yep. far as knowing who owns it. So it doesn't take that. It's not that hard. And and people can't tell me it's going to wreck hunting in North Dakota. It's going to change hunting in North Dakota because we've always been used and in, used to it. And people hate change. No different than me. I don't like change. But again, I just think that it should be one way or the other way. I yeah. would I would sooner have it just all posted and we have to post it. Um, rather than have to do it electronically or have it where it's no trespass. I think I this, this agree. way, this way is just too, the water's too muddy. That's just my personal opinion. It says a uh, text says needs to be like South Dakota. Why are they trying to abolish farmer rancher and hunter relationships? It's not that hard to go visit with the property owners. Let's go to the phone lines. Jesse's waiting in the uh, sidelines here. Jesse, what's on your mind? Hey guys. Well, John, Scott and I talked about this last night uh, or the night before. I don't remember. Uh, got the fishing tournament coming up up here in Beulah, uh, talking about hunting and everything going electronic. What do you think as far as the license purchasing? It's all gone online. Uh, even if you go to a hardware store, Walmart, wherever, and buy a North Dakota license, they do it for you online. Do you know, John, how that rule reads? I couldn't find it. Do I have to carry a paper copy on me of your no, hunting okay, and my fishing license? Yeah. Right, right, and and that's a great question, and I and I have firsthand answer because Courtney Springer, our, my local warden in my area, is a great gal. Took time out of her 
schedule and came and spoke at our bow hunting camp and I specifically asked that question. You have to have either an electronic copy of it or a physical copy of it. Either one works. Okay. Okay, but here's my question. So an electro- electronic copy, if I'm fishing and I get checked, it takes me two minutes to log into North Dakota Game and Fish's website and pull up that I have a license. Does that constitute a, an electronic copy or do I have to have a screenshot of the form or you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and again, like I, I I'm going to, I'm just going to go on a limb and say, because she answered it partially and I never asked her. She just said that, you know, some people she goes, will be like, um, there won't be cell signal. And yeah. if there's no cell signal and you can't pull it up, then it becomes a problem because she sees that like, she goes, then how do I know? Cause I asked her, is it like, you know, like a driver's license, you have time to produce it, you know, you're supposed to carry it on it. And she said, it's up to the warden's discretion sometimes on some of that. So if you fold it up, and no. they, uh, yep. And, and again, it's with law enforcement, it's kind of like getting a speeding ticket. You are going right. 56 miles an hour, Jesse, and that is breaking the law. It's up it's to that. Guy real, yeah. <laughs> yep. And so yeah. it's the same thing. And cause we talked about that with their, the tagging requirements. But again, I think if you, if you were able to pull it up, it would be no different than pulling it up. You have a license and you can show her that you have the license. And she just recommended take a screenshot. And like I do, I take a screenshot. It's in my, my favorite photo. So I know where it's at. And then I also carry my license. It's usually, <clears throat> excuse me, in my binocular harness. Cause I never forget my binoculars because I don't carry a wallet right. anymore. Or I stick it in the back. Yeah. Of, I put a copy of it in the back of my phone um, case. And that's a good right. idea because again, most of us don't leave without your phone. Well, that's how it came up. You know, when a guy's out in the lake fishing, I don't take a wallet with anymore. I don't, I take as little as possible because I don't want to be mm-hmm. dropping things in the water or, you know, a guy gets caught in a rainstorm, you know, as far as taking a screenshot, I do have some folders set up on my phone, but I got two girls. I'm taking pictures and videos constantly. I can't find that damn oh, screenshot on my phone to this save is my like, life. You know, that's like a first and, world problem, Jesse. Good grief. I, 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 hey, that, that's why I live that, here. That, that's why, Jesse, you know, you probably have a phone case on your phone, and that's what I started doing is I just clipped it out and made it as small as possible, and then I stick it, the it between my phone and my phone case, and that way I always always have it, just, just in case. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, again, and, you know, the worst case scenario, Jesse, is if you, you do don't have it, it's a small fine, and you're not losing privileges. Um, you can right. go to court, you know, and show the, the judge that you have it. And like I said, it, it is. It's The Game and Fish has different rules than, than the <clears throat> Highway Patrol and stuff because they have a right to stop you and ask for your license, right. and they can check, check your gun or um, that kind of thing because it's it was made a precedent or a law because of something. So, yep. um, other than that, you know, they can't do, you know, s- searches and things like that. I mean, they got rules to follow, but they can, they yeah. can pull you over fishing and, and stuff. And, and don't get me wrong. I, I am a fan of the online deal. You know, yep. my wife and I were out in the lake the other day. I quit taking care of her licensing a long time ago. Cause I get yelled at cause I apply for the wrong unit for her or whatever. So she's on her own. Well, there we were out in the fishing boat my two little girls and I are fishing and Sarah goes, well, I want to fish. I looked at her and said, you have your license. Well, no, I guess I don't. So there I was in the middle of Lake Sakakawea on my phone and I bought her license. You know, yeah. it, it, I, I love the convenience of it. It's just, I've had some questions. Scott and I were talking about it the other day and I, and I know people, there are people out there that are still wondering how, how some of this all works. So, yeah. well, Jesse, we're getting up against the end of the show here. So man, uh, Thanks, appreciate guys. you calling in. You bet. Yep. Talk to you later. You bet. John, uh, before we go again, if people have questions, comments, they want to get in touch with you after the program. Uh, how do they do that again? They can reach me. Uh, like I said, if they want to call or text me at 701-391-2438, um, I will take any phone call. It doesn't bother me anytime. Uh, they can go online and find my email. It's jarman at teamuoa.com. So always willing to talk hunting and fishing. And, and if you got a problem, 
and you want to chew my butt about something, you know, just do it politely and I will respond to you. If yeah. you're negative and throwing words at me, kind of like YouTube, I just delete you. Um, cause I, <laughs> I, I don't have, I don't have time to argue right. with people about things. I will have a conversation, but I'm not going to get in an argument. It's not worth it. Life's too short. When was the last death threat that you got from somebody? Oh, I get them weekly on YouTube, you know, especially my daughter gets them, you know, like I said, because of she, her, her bear kill is one of the highest. I mean, we, I think it's 150,000 views or something like that. And that's where we get it. Anytime we kill something with fur, um, people don't like it. And yeah. again, I, I don't even respond to them. I just delete them and block them yeah. it's because they're not existent. It's, it's not worth our time. John, thanks so much for coming on the program. Have yourself a great weekend. You too, buddy. Thank you very much, and good luck moving those cows. All right. Thanks a lot. John Armand, Ultimate Outdoor Adventures TV. You can find my daily program on all the radio stations you're listening to or go to dakotaprairieoutdoors.com. Have yourself a great weekend. Stay cool. Eat some meat. Drink some milk. And thank a farmer and rancher out there. All right, stations, thank you so much. John, thanks again, buddy. I'm going to have to uh, cut it early here. i got to go get these... Uh, okay. Get some things uh, ready to ready to go here, okay? You get rocking and on your next show or whatever. When holy cow.